Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Kirk checking in with you again. I'm going to go through with you uh, our eighth day of notes for this polar unit. Uh, today I'm going to go through the magnitude of vectors and some of you taking physics may um, seem that, feel that this might be familiar to you. You may use different formulas in physics that I'm going to be showing you today. But I'm going to show you how to use polars um, to figure out the magnitude of a vector. Well, what on earth is a magnitude of a vector? Well, first of all, I hope that you printed out the um, the note sheet from, uh, from WITS. I have mine taped here, and we'll go get to that in a moment. And again, just like with any video, if you feel like I'm moving too fast, please pause and get yourselves caught up before you move on. So I've got some notes already copied up here. I went ahead and took and wrote an axis of an A plus BI axis so that I could plot a vector. A vector is just a ray starting at the origin, so to speak, and it goes um, essentially um, just like plotting a point. Like if this was a point, for example, 1 plus 3i, you would go to 1 comma 3 and make that into an arrow um, with a, the tip of the arrow at that 1 comma 3 coordinate. But I just drew a picture of a, of a vector here, just some random vector, and I'm going to go ahead and ask you to make this into a right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and add a vertical dotted line here. And I'm going to fill in what I know. Well, if this is some arbitrary point or arbitrary vector, A plus BI, I know that the horizontal distance is A, and I know the vertical distance is B. Where am I going with this? Well, the magnitude of a vector is the length of the vector. Well, let's talk about this diagonal length. And the symbol that we would use to show the magnitude is two vertical lines. So it's almost like, it looks like a double absolute value, but uh, that's the symbol for magnitude. So if I'm looking at this triangle, how can I calculate the magnitude of that vector? Why, it seems really interesting that in this course, we're using the Pythagorean theorem an awful lot, but we are gonna use it again right now. The magnitude of the vector, V, is found by taking the square root of A squared plus B squared. Isn't that just the Pythagorean theorem? That's going to be another formula that I'm going to add to my formula sheet that I've got going for my polar facts. Here's my polar facts that I had started, and I, I added that formula from yesterday's notes at the bottom. I'm going to keep adding these formulas. And that way for the final exam, I've got all these nice little note cards on things that I've been practicing. All right, so let's go to my first example here. My first example gives you two vectors. Vector V is the coordinate 4 plus I, and vector W is 3 plus 6I. Part A says find the magnitude of V. Well, now I know what the formula is. This should be pretty standard. I'm just going to start by writing the formula down, the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now I'm looking for vector V. That's this top vector. I'm going to plug in what I know. I know the number A is going to be 4. And B, this is um, 1 in front of the I, so B is the number 1. Let's see, 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 1 is 17. This is just the square root of 17. So what did I just figure out? Again, if I were to plot the vector 4 plus I, why don't we go ahead and do that? Draw yourself an axis. Where's 4 plus I? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 plus I would essentially be the coordinate 4 comma 1. And if I were to plot that vector with an angle, uh, with a ray, I mean, I'd figure out that was the vector of length radical 17. That's all I figured out. The second part here says to subtract the vectors and then find that magnitude. So what do you suppose I have to do first? You got it. I have to figure out what V minus W even is. Well, we have never really talked about how to do that. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm taking vector v, which is 4 plus i, and I'm subtracting vector w, 3 plus 6i. So let's see. This would be 4 minus 3 is 1. i minus 6i is minus 5i. So now I can calculate the magnitude of that vector by using the formula. So again, nothing too tricky right here. It's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, a is going to be the number 1, and b is the number negative 5. 
Let's see, one squared is one, negative five squared is 25. So this becomes the square root of 26. So part of your homework tonight, you're gonna to have a few questions like this, just to practice this vector notation and how to calculate it. Now let's actually get to the really tough question today. I'm gonna to slide down my paper here. This is my question number two. And again, you can just print this straight from WITS. Um, I put the three questions you're going to need on there for the next couple of days. So let's take a look at this question. It says two forces of magnitude 30 N, that N stands for Newtons. So two ma forces magnitude of 30 Newtons and 40, 70 Newtons act on an object at angles of 45 degrees and 120 degrees with the positive X axes. So I'm just gonna label those couple of things. Find the magnitude of the resultant force. Well, the resultant force is gonna be this, F1 plus F2, it kind of got cut off, F1 plus F2. Okay, this seems pretty crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a minute and draw what this means. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to take a straight edge and on the side of my paper here, I'm gonna draw a picture of this. Let's see, it says it's with respect to the positive X axes. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this mostly in quadrant one. Let's see here. So, I've got an angle of 45 degrees. Well, 45 degrees, we know where that's going to be, right in between the x and the y axes. So the best of your ability is draw an angle of 45 degrees. I'm going to label this as 45 degrees. And they told me that that's going to be um, exerting a force of 30 newtons. So I'll write down 30 newtons next to this just to keep that fresh in my mind. Then it says you also have an angle of 120 degrees. So let's see, 120 degrees is gonna be over here in quadrant two. Just draw any old angle in quadrant two. Okay, I'm gonna mark that, 120 degrees. And they told me in this particular scenario that that's gonna be exerted with 70 Newtons. So I'll label that 70 Newtons. So let's think about this for a minute, just so you can understand kind of what's happening here. I've got a little bit of a visual. I grabbed my, my daughter's little Hatchimal here. It's a little tiger. So let's see what's happening here. Uh, if I were taking this tiger on this path, going 45 degrees in this direction. So here's my tiger going on a 45 degree angle. But then I've got somebody coming along and they're gonna also push the tiger, but they're gonna push the tiger this way. And this one's exerting more force. It's going at 70 newtons versus this 30 newtons. So I want to know where's the tiger going to end up going if I've got one push person pushing it this way and another person pushing it this way. It should go someplace in the middle here. Probably more towards the 70 newtons than the 30 because 70 is a little bit of a stronger force. There's my little tiger. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my resultant vector. And again, it's going to be, I don't know exactly where, but probably someplace closer to the 70. And I'll just draw that vector in, and I'm going to label this as my resultant. Okay, so what am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out the magnitude of the resultant force. I'm trying to figure out the length of this purple vector that I drew in. Okay, so there's another formula I'm gonna be adding to our notes today to be able to calculate this. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the resultant vector over here because I'm gonna move my notes up and I really wanna focus just on the resultant. So my resultant vector was someplace over here in quadrant two. I'm just redrawing it over here on the side of my notes. And again, if I'm going too quick, you can pause the video at any time. Okay, so I'm gonna call that vector V. And to figure out the resultant vector, I'm going to use the magnitude formula, so the magnitude of V. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in polar form. It's the cosine theta I plus the sine theta J. So I'm gonna box this in. I'm gonna be using that formula today. That was my dog. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just write down on the side what this formula is for. This is the formula to calculate 
the magnitude of a force. So according to this problem, I'm supposed to take force one and add that to force two, and that should give me the resultant vector. So let's try this out. Uh, let's see, force one plus force two. So here's my work for force one. Force one, I'm going to start with this formula, the magnitude of force one times the cosine. Oops, I should not have put an equal sign in between here. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to use my white out here. There's, there's no e double equals. It's just the magnitude of V times this. So the magnitude of force one times the cosine of theta I plus the sine of theta J. My gosh, this looks really complicated. Let's try this out. Do I know the magnitude of the first force? I sure do. Up here it tells me the magnitude is 30 newtons. So that's just the number 30. Then you've got the cosine. What's theta do you suppose for the first 45 degrees? And then I plus sine of 45 degrees, J. Okay, so now I can continue on here. I'm gonna refer back to this handy chart here. What is the cosine of 45? The cosine of 45 is radical two over two. The sine of 45 is also radical two over two. So I'm gonna plug those, things, those values in. So 30 times the square root of two over two I plus the sine of radical two over two J. Oh, what are these I's and J's referring to? I probably should have written over here this whole new set of axes. This is the axes I and this is the axes J. Okay, so now from here I can go ahead and distribute my 30. Oops, why did I put sine here again? That's another mistake. Sorry about that, everybody. I already did the sign. So I'm going to distribute my 30 and write down that force one is equal to 15 radical two I plus 15 radical two J. So I'm gonna pause a minute and that's my F1. So what does that mean? That means that the magnitude of my first force is going exactly to the coordinate 15 radical two plus 15 radical two, which if you think about it, here's my original question, 15 radical two, 15 radical two would be exactly the same horizontal and vertical distance. And that would make sense because it's going 45 degrees, which is exactly between zero and 90. So I just figured out the location of where force one exactly would go. Now I need to do the same thing with force two. I'm just gonna divide up my space here. So force two, and again, with this, I'm going to write the formula down because that'll help me memorize it is equal to force two times the cosine of theta I plus the sine of theta J. OK, so at this point, this would be a good point to pause the video and see if you can figure out where these numbers are coming from for force two. I'm going to look back at my first part here to figure this out. So I encourage you now to pause the video and see how much you can fill out. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. The magnitude of my second force, the magnitude of my second force is 70. You got cosine, the angle measure of my second force was 120 degrees. So I've got 120i plus the sine of 120j. And again, this is all in terms of degrees. Okay, so now the cosine and the sine of 120, that's gonna require a little bit of side work. So this again would be a good spot to pause to see if you can figure this out. I'm gonna draw an angle of 120 degrees. This is going to be in quadrant two the reference angle is 60 degrees. And I'll do both of these at the same time. All students take chemistry. We're in quadrant two, so cosine will be negative and sine will be positive. So I did both of them at the same time. 
I'm going to refer back to my chart over here. Let's see the cosine of 60 and the sine of 60. Well, the cosine of 60 is right here at one half and the sine of 60 is the radical three over two. So I'm gonna plug in those values. Let's see, this becomes negative. I guess maybe I should write this down first. Negative cosine of 60 degrees I plus the sine of 60 degrees J. So again, that becomes negative one half I plus the square root of three over two J. And the last part here would be to distribute the 70 into my parentheses. So I'm left with negative 35 I plus 35 radical three J. And again, just to take a moment to pause to figure out what I just calculated. Essentially, I figured out the magnitude or actually I figured out the coordinate, sorry, that this second force would be um, finishing at. So at negative 35 plus 35 radical three would be where the tip of this vector is. Now to figure out, like I said, where the resultant is, you just add these two together. So to finish this question off, I need to calculate what F1 plus F2 is. I've got them both boxed in. So they both have an I, they both have a J, but if you look here, they're not really like terms, right? 15 radical two and a negative 35, you can't really add those things together. So what I'm gonna do is just write them as a parentheses. 15 radical two minus 35 I. And then I'm gonna add, and same with the J's, they're not like terms at all, so I'm just gonna write those in parentheses. So I've got 15 radical two plus 35 radical three with a J next to it. So what did I just figure out? This is the exact location of where the resultant vector would terminate. So find the magnitude of the resultant force, that's the length of the vector. Um, and again, that's pretty much the, the exact location of where it would terminate. Your homework tonight, you do have a series of questions to practice. Uh, definitely take your time on the word problem. It is going to be very challenging. The first few questions are just simply calculating the magnitude, but then you've got a couple of questions where you have to calculate the force like this. So your homework tonight is gonna to be homework 13-8. We're looking at page 621, numbers 43 to 48, and 73 to 75. The answers are gonna be on AN 73. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and until next time, this is Mrs. Kirk. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.